creepy. That thing was a daddy, right? The other That's pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. My gosh. What did you say? I'm gonna go see it. I have to go see it. I have to. So that was a little hairier than I'd like to have seen. It was already a bad tree. That thing was split right down the crotch. You can see right here, it was hollow all the way down the middle. And you can still see the split coming all the way down a, a below where I cut. So I knew I had to take it off two separates. And that first one was really nice, but this one, I knew, I knew that it wasn't gonna make that split. And I tried to run it down the edge of this elm tree, but when she came off, she pivoted to the right and the limb here that split off got caught on that side. And so we had a double chainer. So it wasn't as close as you think it might have been. I mean, we were 15 feet off. Still a little closer than I'd like to have seen, but you know, in those situations, that limb, almost the entirety of it flipped backwards. And so that was as far as that tree could have gone in the other direction. So I knew my chain was long enough to, to steer clear of that, but still, you don't want to see the worst case scenario happen because it does kind of freak out a little bit. But we planned for it, so we were safe. Safe as you can be when you're taking out a tree limb.
to give you guys a little context as to what's going on, we're going to take a trip to the log yard and I'll show you exactly what's been happening with these trees and why we cut them down. And when we went into this woods to start cutting, there was just piles of ash trees laying around everywhere. The property owners came in and they had an individual come in and clean up the trees. Well, what that person did was put them all into these big piles. And so when we came in, we went ahead and we sorted all these piles down. So what we did was we took these piles and we sifted through them and turned whatever was good into lumber and whatever was marginal we turned into firewood and then whatever was rotten we put into individual piles and then we went ahead and burned those piles just to get them out of their way because that's what they wanted us to do. So, But if you look around here what you'll see is that a lot of these trees every last one of them has died from the emerald ash borer. And so if you take a look here on this tree right here, you can see the the bore marks as they went through the trees. And you can pick up the So there's some more some more bore marking, more bore marking down here. And it doesn't matter what tree you go to, you're going to find the same exact thing. And see over here, this is a good one to show you. So these ash borers have come through here and they're just boring all through. Now what the ash borer does is they bore into the cambium layer of the tree and then that cuts off the respiration to the tree and ends up killing it. And so you can see here on the, the even the inside of the bark it's taken the cambium out. And so how a tree functions is it takes water up from its roots and down from its tree or down from its leaves through its cambium layer. And as they come through and they cut those vascular systems, the tree dies. The, the bores themselves, they don't actually bore down into the wood. The only thing they do is they bore into the cambium, and then they don't go any further. And see, this is woodpecker holes. Woodpecker's trying to find them in here. And so what we've tried to do is come through here, and <clears throat> we want to turn as many of these trees into something useful as we can. And so that's why we're sifting through as much as we have been. A lot of the stuff we've come across has been too far gone. We've been dealing with the ash borer here in Ohio since since 2005, I believe. So it's been 15 years of this right here. And like I said, every last tree that we cut into, they're all dead. And you can see more ash borer in here. And it's every single tree that you come across. So here we can see what we have going on and what of our bigger problems. And so as we've gone through these trees, you can see there's just more, more bore marks up in there. But this tree right here, half of it is rotten. And you can see this side is good. This side right here is no good. This right here won't work for anything. I won't even be able to turn this into firewood. Um, hopefully there's some good down in here that we can turn into something useful. But then you just take the tree next to it and this tree is perfectly fine. The other thing we keep an eye out on too is the mushroom growth. And so when you get mushroom growth like this, I would almost guarantee you that this tree is rotten on the inside. And you can take a look at the ingrain and sure enough, you can see right up through here, up, oh, that's bad. And there, there should be some good timber down in here, but we'll have to cut this section out. So I guess overall that's just what you have to do when you're salvaging timber. And I don't mind doing it, you know. These, these trees would all be wasted if we didn't do something with them. So if we didn't do anything with these trees, they'd all be turned back into soil. And while that's fine, we could actually get some use out of them in the meantime. You know, we can take this right here and turn it into something like that, which will eventually still break down into soil, but for the next hundred years, we can use it for a building. And I think that's, that's a good trade-off for all of us. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Goodbye. Goodbye.